So hello everyone and welcome back to the Class 47 Peter YouTube channel and today I'm particularly excited to be taking a look at the Trans Pennine Express liveried Mark V Nova 3 set from Acura Scale. Now this particular pack I pre-ordered back in January on the 11th. I didn't rush out and get one of these pre-ordered when they were announced by Acura Scale. I left it prior to their release. They still had one of the packs left in stock, there had a few of them left to order, so I went and ordered one because my TP Livery 68 is just crying out for these. So I figured that I had to get a pack of these. And so I bought them and here they are, just arrived in the post. And I'm really excited by these. I haven't expected them in detail yet, but I have got the lid off the box at least and had a look at them and they do look pretty fine. They do look quite something. And also, just look at the box artwork on the front there. I think that looks stunning. But anyway, we're going to get these unboxed, then we're going to get them down on the light and we're going to take a look at them. Okay, so the TPE Mark V's have been unboxed and they're down here on the layout, and I have assembled the full rake. And, as you can see, they look absolutely fantastic. Now what is quite interesting is that, in real life, the Transpennon Express service isn't very good at the moment. And there is the possibility that if they don't shape up, they could end up losing the franchise. So, the sight of seeing TPE livery 68s on these Mark V's in this livery could be consigned to the history books, which would be a shame. I'm no model image mod modeller personally, but I do really like the Transpanon Express livery. And I do quite like the Mark V's. I haven't seen TPE livery 68s hauling these Mark V's for myself, but I have seen the TPE 68s elsewhere on freight duties through my local station. I've also seen one of them last year at the East Lanks Railway Summer Diesel Gala and I have seen the TP Mark, Mark V's being hauled through Warsaw when they were brand new and they were being headed off down to Manchester hauled behind Class 37's, 47's, occasionally 57's on one occasion there was even a 57 and Class 20 combination on one of them as well and you can find the films of those on my YouTube channel so I had to get my hands on a set of these Mark V's and also because my TPE livery 68 is just crying out for them. It is also worth consulting the manual when it comes to laying out and assembling the formation. So basically it shows you the guide here of how to do it. So first it's the driving trailer, then it's a T2, then it's a T3, a T3 and a T1. So that's how you assemble the formation. The manual also shows you how to remove the body and fit a DCC decoder. It also shows you the exploded diagrams of all the coaches and all the parts that's been used for them. So if any get damaged or lost then you can order them as spares. And as well as the activating the interior lighting on the coaches. 
Right, so the first thing to report, no quality control issues with these models. Nothing wrong with them at all. No blemishes or nasty marks on the models anywhere at all. Damaged bits that fell off that had to be glued back on again, etc. They've all turned up in a high quality and top notch finish that you expect these models to arrive in when you buy them. Because it's no good spending all this money on models like this and then having them turned up broken or damaged. So now I'm going to test to see how freely that these coaches can roll. So I've taken the T1 off the rake to show this. And as you can see, that runs perfectly fine. So making a start with the detail on these couches, the first thing I want to show you is the interior lighting. These couches come with a wand, and what you do is you just wave it over from the centre of the roof. Like so. And you can then see the interior detail in there. It can be a little bit fiddly and temperamental, this, to try and get it right, exactly, especially when I'm filming it. But I think that this is a fantastic feature. And then you just wave it back over the centre of the roof to turn them off. And if we just turn the lights back on again. Here you can see the one that's applied with the model. This will also work with the interior and cab interior lighting with the DVT, as I'm going to show you. There you go. And again, I think that this is a fantastic feature. So it's a great bit of innovation to see on these models. And it does give them more bang for the buck. And it also adds to the detail and realism of these coaches, to see them all fully lit up. And whilst I have got the interior lighting on, on these coaches, it makes sense to show you the interior detail, which as you can see looks stunning. It's all been painted, and all the colours that you see on the prototype in the interior, I would say are spot on. Obviously the wood need passages inside there, that's something that it can do at a later date and it's something I might do in the future. But the detail on this is just fantastic. It really is nice to be able to see all the detail that's in there. Another feature I love about these coaches is the magnetic couplings. So as you can see, all you do is just pull them apart and then connect them back up together again and also take note of the close coupling that you can see on the gangways now that is what you call close coupling and I think to be honest I think we're possibly approaching that era now where tension locks are being phased out slowly and it really is quite nice to see magnetic couplings applied on an RTR model the Caledonian Sleeper Mark 5s are also fitted with these magnetic couplings as well. However, as for the T1 coach, as you can see, it's fitted with a tension lock coupling. You also do get spare tension locks in one of the accessory bags with the models. There aren't any other magnetic couplings supplied with these models to go for the locomotive to put on the end of this T1 coach. But Akira Scale are selling accessory packs of magnetic couplings, so you can do that. I possibly might have one of my own Hunt couplings around somewhere that I already use on models anyway. I possibly may have a spare one, and if I do, then I possibly could get away with using that on this coach. So we'll have to see what happens there. Just have a look at all the detail on the end of the coach. I mean, as you can see, that that detail, it's correct to the prototype, but also the detail here, such as these cables. They're not moulded, they're separately fitted. And that really is stunning. You've also got sprung buffers as well. They're not made of metal, they are plastic, but there you go. 
There's no question or any doubt that the Kira scale have nailed the Mark Fives. Everywhere you look at them, from detail to the shape and proportions, they scream Mark Fives. Even the livery is spot on as well. So that's superb to see. And they really have captured all the details superbly as well. Moving on to underframe detail, you can see we do have this footstep here for the door for people to climb up and get into the door when it's in a depot rather than at a station platform. Also you can see they've got the detail on the bogies correct, especially with the wheels being exposed and not hidden by the bogies that you see normally on coaches that have axle boxes, springs and pipe work etc. Although you do have to be careful for the axle boxes in the middle. When testing the back to backs from what I've heard, particularly with the Caledonian sleeper Mark Fives, these can pop off. If that does happen you just glue them back on again. But there is something to be careful of. I should think it will probably be the same with the TPE Mark Fives as well, so that's something to watch out for. Also just have a look at the detail that you get by the door as well. You have a warning sign, you've got this other sign there on the door. You've also got the buttons as well and the lights etc. And that really is some very nice detail. On this door here, on this end of the coach, you can see we have the disability logo there with the wheelchair in, so that's obviously for disabled access. And then you've got the first class sign on the door there. Crispy and neatly applied, those signs are. Something else that I've also noticed, and this is something I have only just noticed off camera, so I am including this in the video, it's this centre door light here. So, I'll just turn the lights off. Bear with me. Lights are now off. So then if I get me wand and wave it over in the centre of the roof, you can see that that centre door light there, as you can clearly see, it doesn't just light up the interior, it also lights up that little light there as well. And that's just really stunning. Wasn't expecting that little light to have lit up, but it does. The livery application on the Mark Fives I think is absolutely phenomenal. As far as liveries go, for the present day, I think the Transpennine Express livery is probably one of the best liveries that there is. You know, they've got the colours correct, you know, you've got the silver body, and then you've got these blue stripes as well, on the body side as well. And the design of those looks fantastic, and they've got those correct. And there's no blemishes or imperfections in the paintwork either which is also great to see. The first company and Transpennine Express logos are correct to the prototypes and they've been crisply and neatly applied. They look fantastic. And even the first class signs on the coach bodies and the running numbers are all crisply and neatly applied as well. So they really are stunning. Now as you can see where you have this gaping hole at the moment, that's where you fit the destination blinds, which you do have to fit yourself. So that's something else I'll be showing later on. Also just have a look at the detail on the end of the couch here. You have the overhead warning flashes, the cantrail stripe, crisply and neatly applied those are. And just look at the detail on the gangway. That looks stunning. Of course the couches are all fitted with metal wheels. But also, I'll just turn the, the couch on its side, just so you can see the underframe detail, particularly on this detail part here. You have mesh grills with fans underneath them. The mesh grills or the fans are not one moulded piece, they're separately fitted detail parts. And they just look amazing. And also having another look at the underframe detail, you've got the battery boxes and so on. Some of them even have warning signs on them, crisply and neatly applied. The paintwork that's also been applied to these underframe details is stunning. 
especially that separately fitted mesh grill there. You can also see the detail behind that as well. And that looks stunning. Moving on to the driving trailer or DVT as you could call it. Again they've got the looks of the prototype and all the details spot on. With the driving trailer it does come with directional lights. So I'll just quickly show you the directional lighting. So as you can see those are the tail lights and those are the headlights as you can see which the headlights in this case are the ones just up on, on top of the cab here. On the front of the windscreen we do have a separately fitted windscreen wiper as you can see. Does appear to be some sort of dust mark on the inside of the glazing. Can't rub that off from the outside as you can see that's trapped inside unless I'll get the body off and I think I will do that. The buffers are again sprung loaded and they are plastic ones. You've also got the NEM pocket so that you can couple the driving trailer up to a loco should there be a driving trailer failure. And then you've also got the air pipes there as you can see which are already pre-fitted. And also just look at all the data that you get on the front of the driving trailer as well. It's all been very well captured. And you can also see the interior detail of the driving trailer and that's all been very well nicely picked out and painted. And that looks stunning. On the roof of the driving trailer you have this box with what appears to be some sort of extractor fan or something or other. And on first glance looking at it I actually thought it was just a printed bit of detail but it's not. That's a separate fitting. That's, not, that's no printed detail, even though looking at it from a certain angle or distance it does look like it is, but it's not. And it does look stunning. So I have got the Dapple Class 68 out and I'm comparing the colours of that to that of the Acura Scale driving trailer. And as you can see, the colours of both the Dapple Class 68 and the Acura Scale Mark 5s they are an exact match as you can clearly see. So that just demonstrates that it's not just a curious scale that's got the colour right but so have Dapple and that's great to see because otherwise it just wouldn't look right if the colours on the Dapple Class 68 didn't match the colours of the Acura scale Mark V's which they do of course in real life match so you'd want the models to match as well and they do as you can see here. And the Acura scale have also got the way the colours are laid out on the DVT. Obviously you've got the light shade of blue and then you've got the darker shades not to mention the way the stripes are laid out along the DVT as compared to that of the Mark V's and again a Cura scale I've got that correct as well. I'm now going to go through the accessories what you get in the box with the models. So here you have two windscreens for the driving trailer, I'm presuming the supplied two in case one gets damaged or lost. In this bag you've got the air dam and tension lock couplings. There's even some sort of screw link coupling in there as well as you can see for the DVT of course. And then you have the destination boards as well for the couches and the driving trailer. So it is quite interesting to see that you have to fit those yourself, which that's going to be quite fun to do. So now I'm going to show you how to fit the destination boards. Now, a Curascale recommends that the glue you use for this is PVA. I mean, you could use other adhesives, but at the end of the day, PVA glue, if you get a bit on the model, it's not going to damage it or harm it. It's a different story if you use something like poly cement or super glue. So that is the reason why I myself have chosen to use the PVA. So for the for this, you just need a small blob. And 
on using a cocktail stick for this. And what you do is you just basically just rub it on the inside. Then you take your destination board. Now with these you have the choice of either Scarborough or Liverpool Lime Street. So obviously if you're going to choose let's say Scarborough then you need to make sure that that destination board is going to be the same for all the coaches basically. But the one I've chosen to go for is Liverpool Lime Street. So you just take your destination board and you just slot it into place like so. There you go, jobs are good. One. I have fitted the destination blind and the windscreen on the DVT. That windscreen needs to be glued in place as well, so I have used PVA glue for that. You might be able to see a little bit of this, and that's because it's yet to dry. So now I'm just going to quickly show you all the coaches, just to show you that I have fitted all the destination blinds to all of them. So, here we have the driving trailer. Then next we have the T3 coach. We have the other T3, the T2, and the T1. And they all have the same destination blind, which is of course Liverpool Lime Street. And that's because the destination blinds in all the coaches is the same. And I have also fitted a Hunt Elite coupling to the T1. I've had to borrow that one off one of my intermodal wagons. And the reason I've done that is because the 68 is also fitted with a Hunter Leak coupling which as you can see works pretty well. So now that I've covered the TPE Mark 5s in detail and also shown how to fit the destination boards this is now where we're going to come on to the real exciting bit and that's getting these running around the layout with the Transpennine Express Livery 68. So let's get into that now and then I'll offer my verdict for these models. So I can't wait to get these running on the layout.
Right, so we've seen the Transpennon Express Mark V Nova 3s running round on the layout in push pull motion with the TPE livery class 68. Now, for using the hunt couplings, I did have to do a little bit of experimentation with the couplings because I was getting some issues with the running. I swapped them over for some stronger magnets, but it was only then afterwards I suddenly realised what the problem was. If the couplings connected to the loco are too close together then the buff buffers are basically touching on both the loco and the coach and going around corners that then causes the loco to basically push that coach off the rails and derail it so I had to put two magnets on that magnetic coupling that couples the loco to the coach to stop that from happening but it's all been sorted now and it's all running reliably and to have this running around on the layout it just looks fantastic it really does look the bee's knees. So what are my thoughts then on the Transpennon Express livery Mark V's? Honestly, I think these are absolutely superb. I know that some people might think 225 quid for five coaches seems a lot of money, but just look at the detail and the innovation that you're getting, plus not to mention the quality as well of these coaches. You know, they really are high quality coaches, the detail is just stunning and they just look absolutely exquisite. Especially to now have some matching stock to run with a 68. So, if a small batch of these becomes available on a Curious Scales website, which I suspect they might do, I think that's what they did with the Caledonian Sleeper Mark 5s, and if you have a TPE livery 68, then I'd say go ahead and buy these Mark 5s. Or if they do more under these in the future, which I'm sure they will, then I'd say definitely recommend them. Go ahead and buy them. You won't be disappointed. I can't really think of anything much wrong with them, other than the fact that you have to make sure that the coupling that couples the coach to the loco they aren't too close because otherwise the buffers will be touching and then that will cause derailments but aside from that though these are stunning so well happy I got these so well done to Acura Scale so that's it then for my review on the Acura Scale Transpennon Express livery Nova 3 Mark 5s as ever thank you very much for watching I hope you've enjoyed the video if you like what you see then subscribe to the channel, feel free to smash the like button and post a comment and check out all my other videos that I've got on the channel. But until next time, take care. Bye for now.